Hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna run through numerous things that you can do if your power goes off to keep your fish tank and more importantly, your filter, which in turn will keep your fish alive. Now, even in a very well planted tank with a perfect sort of environment, you still need to shift the water around. So in that scenario, you would still need a pump. So you would require the power. But unfortunately for most tanks, <laughs> comparing them to nature, they are very overstocked, so they won't look after themselves for very long, even with the water flow from a pump. So you'll require foams to keep the water clear and filter media to keep the water healthy. That needs to be fed all the time, so the water needs to flow over the foams or over the filter media all the time to keep the bacteria that's living on there alive, or at least alive in big enough numbers to process the ammonia and the nitrite, which are the real killers in the fish tank. Now everything I'm going to show you in this video will be linked in the video description and also in the pinned comment, if I can find it, because a lot of this stuff I did buy probably is up to a year ago when I first had the idea for this video and then I promptly forgot about it. Yeah, I'll see what I can find and I'll put the links in the description. <laughs> So let's just work on the assumption that you've got a lightly stocked tank, really well set up, good substrate, well planted, to keep the fish alive, at least for a few days. All you need is a pump. Now this one is a tiny little pump. And if you notice the end there, it hasn't got a plug on. It's got a USB attachment. That's very important because obviously you're not just going to be able to plug straight into your main socket to get a pump going if you've got no power. You need to provide your own power. These pumps, I think at the time I bought this one, it was only five or six English pounds. May have gone up by now. If I can find this or one very much like it, I'll put the link in the video description. I'll just give you a close up of it there. I think it's got a roughly three meter cable. That's your USB and the pump itself shifts about 200 litres per hour which isn't much but in an emergency situation that is enough but if you've got an external filter or hang on the back filter or something like that or even an internal filter with filter media you could put that filter media into a mesh bag and simply direct the flow of this pump onto the mesh bag of media that would keep the water flowing over the media it would keep the bacteria fed keep the bacteria alive so it would, in effect, keep your filter going even though your main filter was taken out of the equation. As soon as the power comes back on, take all that stuff, put it straight back in your main filter and it won't miss a beat. Obviously in a power out situation, we need to supply this little pump with power. So we do have a few options. First of which is like a, a battery backup power bank sort of thing. A lot of people use these for the phones or like small devices to go on camping and so on and such forth. They're not expensive. This one is 20,000 milliamp hours, so it's got a good capacity to it. Just a quick close-up on this fella. It's got a digital readout, which tells you how much power it has left. I'm not quite sure whether you can see that. It's seeing 100% because I just charged it up in preparation for this video. As the power gets depleted, that will drop. And on the end, we've got two outlets and one input. And hopefully, if we plug that into there, you should see the pump going. There you go. And as I said before, all you need to do is direct that flow of water onto a mesh bag of media from your main filter. That'll keep it alive and it'll keep the fish alive. That's our bag of media there. Just imagine that has come from our main filter. We just drop that in put the outlet of the pump onto it, all the bacteria will still get fed off the ammonia being generated in the tank, and this will run for long enough. I mean, how many watts is this? Oh, oh dear me, it's only three watts. This is gonna run for ages on this battery pack. -up. Another option is to plug it into a solar panel. This is a folding one, there's numerous other ones available. But this one here actually has a battery backup attached to it as well, which is 10,000 milliamps. So it's only got half the capacity of this fella, but it has the bonus of being able to be charged up via the solar panels. So in an emergency, assuming it's a sunny day and you've got no power stored anywhere, 
you know your battery backup is dead you could stick this outside for a few hours charge this up bring it in plug that into there you see the pump is going again good stuff again I'll just give you a close-up of this that's our battery backup which has also got a solar panel on there and folding out from here we've got all our other panels that in total is 5 watts doesn't sound like much but on a sunny day it charges this fella up pretty quick and then on the end there we've got two outlets for your USBs and one power input it always pays to have something like this on standby just in case you go traveling anywhere or just in case the power goes out they don't take up much space and they do have a decent capacity you know you can charge your phone up you can charge little flashlights up you can run small pumps you can also run small air pumps and that's what I'm going to mention next I'm going to show you two different sorts of air pumps this one it's a tiny little air pump again it runs on a USB I'm not quite sure how much power this consumes but it's got to be something like I don't know 1.5 to 2 watts it'll be next to nothing so if you're looking for absolute longevity a small air pump is probably the way to go there's the USB we've got approximately maybe two to two and a half meters of cable and then we've got our little air pump that looks like a gherkin <laughs> it's got a little carabiner on there so you might be able to hang it on the side of your tank or somewhere nearby and that's the end where the airline goes obviously you can just attach an airline to an air stone just to keep the water moving if you want to keep it moving but if you're running the tank with a filter which 99.99% of people are you could run certain types of filters just with the air pump and for that scenario I would advise getting one of these fellas or something similar that is the ZIS moving bed filter and I, I was really pleased when these came out on the market because when I put that first you know internal moving bed filter video out probably 10 to 12 years ago uh, I was praying that somebody would start producing them commercially and the first one I saw was from this so that's the one I'm showing here it's got a bit of foam in the bottom this would normally be filled with moving bed media airline goes in here feeds to the bottom moves the media water and air comes out of the top it's a very simple filter to be honest moving bed filters can be a little bit noisy they're not super effective therefore I wouldn't really advise using this as a moving bed I think it's just a you know it, it's a useful distraction it's a, it's a bit of a waste of time to be honest you're better using proper media and that's what you can put in here so remember this scenario here is that we've got a proper filter either externally or internally it's got foams and media or possibly just foams we want to keep water flowing over that so what we do we take that off fill it with media put the top back on any excess media could go into mesh bags in front of the outlet so the water is just gently flowing over it again that would keep the media alive or the bacteria living on and in the media alive and the media in here will certainly be kept alive because as the water is being drawn in spat out the top it has to go over the media so we'll just stick that on there plug that into our tiny little air pump plug the air pump into the battery backup and it looks like I'm gonna to have to bring the camera in here because I can't see that on the viewfinder okay so that's it going air's being pumped in it flows up through the filter media and out the top to keep the media alive if by chance you don't have one of these power banks for like a battery backup what you could do is attach the USB from your little air pump to a USB extension that was designed to carry power as well as data they tend to be the better ones that so you don't lose the power between A and B uh, this one is three meters long you can run that out of the window and you can plug this into you know folding solar panels or a fixed solar panel just something cheap that you would buy for camping and hang that out your window in the sunlight that'll provide the power it'll feed back to the pump which in turn will feed the air into your filter to 
keep your media alive for as long as you need it to. And a lot of these little solar panels, including this one, have got two outlets. So you could plug your air pump into one of the outlets. If you've got another battery that you want charging, you can plug that into the other outlet and even a small solar panel will be able to charge the battery and have enough power to keep the filter going at the same time as well. When the sun goes in, you can run your pump on your battery. You know, the strange thing is, for all the videos I've seen on this ZIS filter, or similar filters to the ZIS, um, I've never seen anybody mention the fact that it could be used to keep your main filter media alive, just with a little air pump. To me, that's a pretty obvious use for it, and really, you know, thinking as a prepper, that is a better use for it because it takes up quite a lot of space in the tank and as I mentioned before the moving beds aren't really that efficient yeah when they're established you know after five or six months they'll strip out the ammonia and nitrite they'll do nout for the nitrate because it's all aerobic I'd get one of these and just keep it as a spare just in case the power went out and use it as I've just instructed now then on the subject of air pumps we've got like a hybrid air pump which has got a solar panel and a 18650 battery in here solar panel charges the battery feeds out to power a filter now this is a great idea because you can just put this one outside and run your airline back to your filter so the sun's shining on it it's charging the battery and it's keeping your filter going forget where i got this one from probably amazon or ebay or something like that it wasn't much money and it works pretty well let me just get this one unplugged and I'll plug our little solar one in. Uh, that's it. So obviously with this one, you'd either hang it somewhere using the little hook or you just lie it down outside somewhere and you would angle this so it's flat onto the sun for maximum exposure. Then you just turn that on. After you plug your airline in, there we are little switch on the back and there isn't much air coming out but there is some air coming out that's all it needs just needs those bubbles which you can probably see a little bit better there it just needs those to be rising through the media all the time so that's yet another option to keep your filter alive it's actually quite a big unit because it's got the battery in there as well as the electrics and it's got the solar panel on the top. That's a switch on and off, put it on. It does make a little bit of a but it isn't very noisy. And on the end there that's where you put your airline and that's where it draws the air in. Now I think these are mostly sold for the fishing sort of community with them having the hook on the back there You'd hook that over a bucket, angle that to the sun, put your airline into an air stone into a bucket and you'd be able to keep all your bait alive until you wanted to kill it by impaling it on a hook. I'll not get these out of the bag but this kit actually comes with a USB for charging it if you haven't got any sun. It comes with two air stones, a Y piece splitter and two bits, oh, one, two, three bits of airline pre-cut to size so you would feed one out into the splitter and then that would go to each of your air stones again this is something that you would never ever use until you had an emergency and if you had an emergency where there was no power and you didn't have something like this you'd pretty much be knackered this would be static and it would very quickly pollute itself There'd be nothing there to keep the filter alive and for the sake of what I don't know I can't remember how much this was 10 12 quid or something you can keep all the fish in your tank alive you know all these options that I've shown you here are really really cheap well maybe it's apart from the this filter but even the copies now that are coming out are very cheap to be honest to do the same job so you could probably get a really good setup for under 30 quid and that would include the filter the power bank folding solar panel or an all-in-one solar panel and power bank all your USBs and everything that you would need to 
keep your tank alive and that's a pretty small outlay when you take into account how much it costs for all the fish and other things in your tank. Oh, I nearly forgot about this fella, now that I've put all the blooming air pumps away. This is another option. This, yeah, again, there's loads of copies of these, is the Quan V QS-200A air-driven filter. There you go, that'll look familiar if you've seen, oh God, what's he called? Aquarium, aquarium Co-ops videos. I'm pretty sure he sells these on his site. If I can find them, I'll put a link to them. Again, air is pumped in, goes down there, rises up, and as it rises up, it draws air in through the foams, but it also has the bonus of having two parts on the bottom, which you can fill with your filter media. So that's another one to have on standby. As a standalone filter in a tank, it takes up quite a lot of space, you know, but uh, it is a viable option if you just had a, a little breeding tank or something and you just wanted to run that all the time. And now that I think about it, Aquarium Co-op may actually have the uh, Zis filters, or certainly a copy of those, on his website as well, so it might be worth checking them out. That would be the better option for me. Wouldn't really bother with that one, unless it was something you're running all the time, because it doesn't have much capacity for the biomedia. Whereas that one does, you'll get a canny bit in there. Now, as ammonia is the biggest killer, which will then turn into nitrite, which is in itself a pretty big killer, especially if it builds up, you can integrate something into your emergency filtration to prevent the ammonia from building up in your water. Again, other products are available, but this one is ammonia block from RP Aquatics. Comes in sachets like that. You could easily get that sachet into the top of that filter so that the water is drawn up through all the filter media then it goes through your ammonia pad which has got like a resin which just draws it in and locks it up that'll still give your media full access to any ammonia that's in the tank first and then this will skim off any excess that way you'll be able to oh, God. <laughs> oh. Ah, where was I? Uh, well, I was getting wet. What was I doing with that? This is how bad my memory is, man. It takes me ages to film a video. And if you notice all the cuts, it takes me even longer to edit it. it normally takes three to four hours for me to edit a video because I never plan what I'm going to say. I just get some gear and talk about it, you know? <laughs> and it's difficult talking to a camera because there's no feedback. Uh, anyway, I think I was probably talking about these pouches. I did show them in the last video when we were discussing about the layout of the canister filters and also the booster filters. This is worth keeping on hand. I think a set of three pads is 25, 26 quid or something. And really, these are gonna last for a hell of a long time in storage. Well, basically, they're gonna last forever in storage. In use, each pad will last about eight weeks. So even if your electric goes off for days and days on end, this will prevent the ammonia building up to critical levels, even if you haven't got a load of filter media and you've just got, say, a, a foam filter, you know? That is a bacon saver. <laughs> no. It's better to have something and not need it than need it and not have it. And that's what I keep telling my wife when she sees what I've bought in the way of survival gear. <laughs> now I'm obviously not saying buy all these things, but some combination of these things or similar things will definitely help to save your tank. Obviously we've just got a tiny little tank set up here, but there's no reason why you couldn't just hang mesh bags in front of a floor to keep a big filter on a big tank alive. Assuming it's not going to be, you know, weeks on end, you know, for a few days, no problem at all. You don't need big power hungry things to keep your system alive. However, if you did have a canister filter and nothing else, and you wanted to keep that canister filter running on your tank for a long time, there is another option. It is not a cheap option, but it's a brilliant option. And it will also help the power you know, sockets, lights, all sorts of things in your house.
Now this next thing is a very expensive option if you go for the one I did. There is smaller versions which have totally explained how they work and everything in a previous video. I'll put the link to that in the video description as well. This would be the Jackery Outdoor Solar Powered System. Okay, so I'll just shift all these things out the way. I'll maybe pull the camera back a little bit and then I'll show you what uh, you know a semi-permanent option would look like right so I've got a mains powered pump which I'm going to use this to demonstrate obviously this is way too small for a big tank but at a pinch if you were feeding the outlet water from here through mesh bags of filter media from your main filter it would do a job it would definitely do a job that's an Eden 3 316 I call it the stone cold edition. <laughs> okay, so this is the Jackery 1000. And the 1000 relates to how many watts of power it stores in here. So 1000 watts is basically one kilowatt. And that's a lot. If you've got a 25 watt canister filter, which is more or less the average for a decent sized canister filter, this should power it for around about 40 hours. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that, my maths is terrible. I think it should run constantly for about 40 hours. You could use your folding solar panels, which come with this, put those outside, run the cable inside and charge this up during the day, providing it's you know sunny and fine. And that would give you even longer. You know, potentially, you could give your decent sized tank and the canister filter like an off-grid sort of existence with this sort of setup. It is expensive. As I mentioned before, this is the 1000. It comes with two. It comes with two 100 watt folding solar panels. It's just a really good setup. Not cheap, but there is smaller versions available. There's a 500 and there's a 240. Even the 240 would run a 25 watt um, canister filter for more or less 10 hours, which is pretty good. 500 would run it for about 20 hours. And the 1000, which is this one again, would run it for about 40 hours. That's providing you never charged it up. You know, if you just plugged it in and let it run, that would give you, you know, more than likely enough time before the mains power came on. And really, your tank wouldn't miss a beat. It wouldn't matter if the lights in the tank weren't on. As long as the filter was going, those fish wouldn't know that the power, you know, the mains power was off. In front of here, we've got a couple of standard USB outlets. One is a fast charge, I think, 3.0. The other one's 2.4. So you can run two USB things out of there. You might have a little pump, or you might have one of those air pumps that we showed before. That would consume next to nothing on this. My God, this would run it for days on end, probably weeks, one of those little pumps. For a bigger pump, as I mentioned, it, you know, it would run still for days. A little pump like that, again, would run for days. That's what we're going to be demonstrating this with. Hopefully you'll be able to see it on. And then on the other side, we've got two standard plugs. And a switch to turn it on. There you go. Again, it will power this just as easily as it would power your canister filter. So you wouldn't need to fart around lifting anything out and taking the media out and putting it in bags and sticking it in front of a little pump. If you had to get something like this, you could literally just plug your canister filter into here and just let it run until your power came on. It's a very good system, but as I mentioned before, it is expensive. For this version, the other versions, obviously aren't quite so expensive because they're not as big but then again they don't have the capacity hmm. it's kind of a question of you know what sort of a power outage do you want to plan for most of the time the power's only off three or four hours to be honest most fish tanks as long as they're not critically overstocked won't suffer that much if the electric goes off for three or four hours they probably won't even notice but if you've got a tank that's full of, you know, six, seven hundred quid discus, buying a system like this that you could use for other things as well, like camping and, you know, taking in camper vans, going on holiday with and all that sort of stuff, 
it's not really that much of an outlay it's literally a couple of really expensive good quality fish if you got marine even more so actually talking to marine and tropical fish heaters will absolutely devour the power I mean, I mean in a normal sized tank say I don't know 150 to 200 liters you generally have like a 200 watt heater this even though it's one kilowatt storage would only power a 200 watt heater for five hours so you can see why it's more important to run the filter keep the filter alive than it necessarily is to keep the heater on because it'll drain any sort of battery really quick and I mean the other options that we previously looked at with those little battery backups and the little folding solar panels they've got no chance of supplying enough power for a heater in that situation if you're expected the power to be off for a long time if you've got any bubble wrap wrap your tank in bubble wrap put it over the top try and hold as much heat as you've got in the tank in the tank until the power comes back on try and do basically try and avoid using the heater because that will sap anything even something like this very very quickly when I say it this would run a 200 watt heater for only five hours that's based on it being on all the time of course due in normal circumstances a heater isn't on all the time but say your electric goes off in the winter your house is going to get very cold pretty quickly unless you've got another source of heat in the house so you normally have electric heating obviously that's off and whatever temperature the room is your tank is going to very quickly become that temperature so best thing to do would obviously be if you had like a log burning stove or something which I know a lot of people don't now but if you had a log burning stove throw a few more logs on the fire warm the house up and then your tank will obviously warm up to the temperature of the room you won't need your heater in that sort of situation right so I think I've covered pretty much everything that I intended to cover because I don't have any spare parts lying around normally when I film a video I finish it and then I go oh god there's something else so I might write that in the description if I have forgotten something I will put it in the video description as well as the links to all this stuff or you know alternatives that I can find in the video description and also in the pinned comment if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up because the algorithms for whatever reason don't seem to pick up my videos I don't know whether I don't make a flashy enough title or whatever I don't know they just seem to sink without a trace unless they get picked up by you guys and put on forums or Facebook groups or whatever I'm not on any of those sort of groups so I'm not exactly the master of um, selling myself <laughs> Likewise, if you want to take this video and upload it to your own channel or take clips from it, be my guest, you know. When I put these videos out, they're basically yours to do with whatever you want. I won't come chasing you if you upload the whole video to your channel. Um, as long as you just leave the video description intact so people get the relevant information. I don't care who re-uploads my videos. I actually found something on YouTube the other day uh, on that subject and I didn't realize it was there because I tend not to look at like the back end of the producer's studio whatever the hell they're calling it now I think it had something like content claims or content queries or something like that I clicked on it and there was 260 odd uh, other channels had taken my videos and re-uploaded them <laughs> And I just thought, God, I'm not even going to start going through these and, you know, doing them for like copyright. Oh, I just let them have them, you know. The information is the most important thing to get out. That's why I've started saying just use the video or clips of it for whatever purpose you want, you know. I, I'm easy that way. Thanks for watching. See you next time. What is this?